Moms with Back to Earth Creations, and thank you so much for joining us here today for another Craft Along with Vaughn live stream. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Joe. Hey, Sabaya. Hey, Pro. Hey, Mandy Lou. How did your uh, How did your art show go, Mandy Lou? Hey, <laughs> comatose. No pants Friday. I wish I'm wearing fancy pants today. Whew. Sounds like onomatopoeia. <sighs> Give me just a sec. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I had to check on something. It has been a doozy of a day, and I am so looking forward to chilling out and unwinding. And also, I'm in an awkward position because there's a cat that you can't see. There's a cat's cat butt um, over here by me. <laughs> she stole my heated blanket. The wind was up to 120 miles per hour. Comatose, good grief. Now, it's, it's windy here, but I don't think it's 120 miles per hour. Hot dog. Hey, pro. Okay, so tonight I'm finishing off some necklaces. I am making a pair of earrings, some shaggy loops, and then I'm going to be making some more necklaces with like dagger beads. So some wire wrapping, some chain mail. If y'all have any questions about anything, it doesn't matter if it's like on topic or pertaining to the craft that we're working on at that moment. Um, Go ahead and ask me and I'll try my best to be helpful to you guys. Um, we're storm for decades. I bet, comatose. Y'all stay safe. <laughs> hey, Al. <laughs> hey, Miss Kiwi from St. Louis. Very cool. Hey, Ruby. Kitty is not amused. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead. Hey, J-Max. I'm going to go ahead and get the camera flipped around so that we can just get right into work because... I need some craft therapy today. Ooh, hey, Sandy. Hey, Sean. How's it going, Peddler's Medley? Flipping this around. There we go. Oh, the tripod is up way too high, but that's fine. I know, doggy. Ooh-wee. There we go. Waves from Indianapolis. Hey, Allison. How are you doing? After party tonight? Definitely. It has been a hot minute, Sean, <laughs> since we've seen you in a live stream. How's it been? Okay. Ooh, cold coffee. I'll take it. Ooh, hey, Karen. Craft therapy, indeed. Oh, Sandy, we did get snow yesterday, though it was mostly ice. Was that yesterday? Yes, that was yesterday. Um, and honestly, most of it's all melted off now already. It's just, it's been very, very windy and very, very cold. So the cold air has been cutting through the house like crazy. And, um, ooh, yeah, it's been cutting through the house like crazy. So we've been having to blare the heater because <laughs> it, it's, and so like my sinuses are all dry and stuff. I'm just, ugh. I am ready for something else. <laughs> I said four to eight inches. Ooh, I don't know if we got that much here in Carthage. But, hey, Carmen. Oh, well, thanks, Jenny. I'll actually, we'll look at that a little bit more. I love that chainmail chandelier, too. Like, it's anytime I'm feeling, like, kind of, like, <sighs> just less I. I like to look at it and be like, see, I did a thing once that time. <laughs> but no, I, and I have a lot of very pleasant memories associated with that chandelier as well. Because we'll take it with us whenever we go camping, when we're like bougie uh, glamping. And it is hands down like the coolest. Put some candles in it. Um, kind of just, ugh. Ooh, yeah, sound says, I see some freeze and fuse. Yes, this is how they came out, y'all. And I'm really, really pleased. Now, this one we need to put through on another... Uh, oh, well, thanks, Carmen. 
this one we need to put through on another uh, few, like fire polish schedule to even out those bumps. But I'm, I feel like I'm finally making some headway with freeze and fuse. And I think we're going to do another experiment next week with um, another different mold as well as with a different technique entirely that our friend Pro uh, was telling us about. And Pro Pools is so ready to do some camping. Dude. Me too. I just want to go somewhere other than my backyard and set stuff on fire. Um, but I love how these were made with one of these. If y'all watched it, it was made with the resin mold. And it really did round off the front much more nicely than what um, the mold accomplished alone with when working with resin. It had a very like blocky surface. Which isn't bad, it's just not my favorite. And so, of course, I'm trying to... Man, blinded by the light at this lab. Ka-chow. <laughs> okay, let me mess about with the tripod just a little bit more. Fire is so good. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to start with the chainmail earrings. Because I want to go ahead and get those assembled <laughs> so I was starting to make a little bit of shaggy loop mostly just because I really like the color <gasps> of these beads I don't even know what's up with the dogs y'all hey what's up Z you got your bone you're a dog you're not allowed to harass the mailman we've talked about this yeah oh yeah well come on over <laughs> it's hard work being a dog all day but somebody's got to do it so I don't want to keep just using this one same ring size for everything but also it's kind of perfect for everything so I'm just going to keep using it though I don't mm, we'll see let's start with finding a ring size that actually fits through our dagger beads which I'm going to try the 20 gauge 5.30 seconds. <laughs> ah, thanks, Rhonda. Hey, Lorna, how's it going? Oh, I <laughs> love Mandy Lou says, I love chainmail, but I suck at it. The good news is with practice comes progress, and chainmail is nothing if not practicing opening and closing rings over and over and over again. So I think that one's not going to work. It's just a little too tight of a curve, so I'm moving up to the 20 gauge 3 sixteenths. And we get to play the classic game of will it fit, and this one will not. Hey Laura, no, we, we just got started. Hey Myrtle says, am I too late? Nope. <laughs> We've, whoops just gotten started well those rings aren't gonna fit either are these do these ones just have like super rump? we may have to do some wire wrapping and chain mail so we'll see how that goes hey dj just a new kit so i have them sorted since i never started oh right on boo <laughs> these ah! why isn't this fitting this is not as easy and convenient as i wanted it to be see it fits through that one just fine Rumph, I say. It makes me crabby. Oh, I get that. I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. Chainmail's great for when you like you feel like being frustrated by something. Okay. Well, that one works with that ring size at least. Let me even try maybe a ring size down. Because if I could get the 20 gauge 1 8 inch to fit, oof, that'd make me so happy. Hey, Yvonne. Other Yvonne was thinking of all the equipment I need to make my own saw cut jump ring. How much do tumblers cost these days? You can get a decent tumbler for pretty cheap at Harbor Freight, like a rotary tumbler. And honestly, uh, depending on how many, like how, how much production you want to do, um, the coil cutter, coil with a K, cutter with a K, is a lot more affordable than the ring lord and you can even just use a jeweler's saw 
and just kind of hand saw cut your own. Ooh, Sharon says, is that box of rings in your toolbox? I sure hope so. If it's not, I really need to update that. Um, and also, now you can find it in any of our, if you click on any of our recent chainmail tutorials, uh, it would be down in the video description for that. Or you can just uh, follow the portal links, maybe down below in the video description, um, to Amazon and find American uh, Chainmail Ring Kit. Or I guess you could go to their website too, AmericanChainmail.com. But their bright aluminum sampler is fantastic. Chris says, a friend of mine just got me a tumbler. Oh, well, that was kind of them. Can't wait to try it out. I'm new at tumbling. <laughs> right on. I've never really done more with it than uh, putting in some stainless steel shot and tumbling some chainmail rings. But So I guess I get to see if these rings fit through any of the dagger beads we're going to be using today. Because I thought it would just be like an easy thread. Like just like, oh, just, just put the... Just put the ring through and it'll be fine. It was not fine. Oh, and this one, you got to be careful on these dagger beads because you don't want to like break them. But sometimes I'll fit it through just enough and then wiggle it over. Uh, right now I am working on, uh, <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> I've been doing like grown up adulty crap all day and I'm tired of it. So I'm going to, I'm just putting beads on other beads. <laughs> hey, Natalie. It's been a long time no see. I was actually wondering about you. Like yesterday, I think. So this one. Yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of wire wrapping apparently because... I was just going to use chainmail rings to fit through these little cute little dagger beads and they keep not uh, fitting. But I'm going to do all the ones that fit rings first. So there's that one. I'm going to use a big ring for the middle one and by big it's the 5 30 seconds instead of the 1 8 inch. Hey, hair of fire. Been looking for laser cutter stuff, and so I'm about to spend another. Gra what? Oh no, pro! <laughs> hey, star. Hey, Linda. I'm glad you like what we do. Hey, Uni. Got my chainmail rings in. They're a bit smaller than I planned. I believe they're about the size of the right side of your container. Oh goodness. Well, that's still like. Uh, what ring size did you get? The nice thing about rings is they don't go bad. We still have some obscure sizes uh, that we had gotten, I guess, back in 2008. That uh, sometimes that's exactly the right um, size is what we need. We do, Myrtle. We've got some red right here. It's really nice, like, deep ruby red color. <laughs> uh, we still have rabbits, but we haven't been harvesting them. Uh, we use them as part of our... Sorry, let me get this ring close so I can juggle two thoughts at once. Um, part of our composting process. They turn greens and fruits and all sorts of different stuff into poop way faster than just digging it digging a hole and putting it in the ground oh and i broke it bugger okay well i'll have to dig out another one right on natalie that's good i'm glad to hear that there we go oh well that fit in just fine okay so in today's game of Will It Fit? <laughs> hey Wayne, I'm late, I'm late. Ooh, Rhonda says, I fell in love with your clay leaf pendant tutorial. What size were the teardrop labs that you used? Um, 
Ooh, I've got them stowed away right now. Otherwise, I'd pull them out and measure them for you. They were around, maybe at the longest point, 30 millimeters. But it was pretty close to like um, a 20 by 30 teardrop. But the nice thing about it is you could use larger or smaller and just adapt the clay to... Um, pardon me, uh, adapt the clay to, you know, kind of either make a smaller pendant or a bigger pendant. Uh, Sarah says, I was wondering if this month's boxes have been shipped out. Uh, we ship out every Monday. So depending on when you're charged during the month, uh, it would be the following Monday. So like if you were charged today, we'd be shipping you out on Monday. Um, if you, if your box is later than it should be, uh, send us an email with the information on your account, like, you know, what email you would have been signed up under and stuff. And, um, we'll find your tracking info for you. Or if it, uh, fell between the cracks, we'll get it taken care of. Is it possible to use your bead remover? Oops. Um, it is, but I've found that with these, uh, dagger beads, if I try to ream them out, the pressure of doing that, um, breaks it pretty reliably. Uh, so I try to not do that. <laughs> ah, got you, Rhonda. Well, hopefully we'll have some for our next shop update. But yeah, anytime that I'm shopping with anybody, um, it was charged last week. Okay, well, we'll have to, if you could send us that email, Sarah, we'll see what we can do. Hey, Rosalie, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm just going to go grab the whole tray of these dagger beads. And thank you guys so much for adding me, because it does the, um, whoops. Oh, Ember, I'm going to have to scooch you, baby. I'm sorry, but I don't want to run you over. I know. I know. She's still my heated blankie. <laughs> but yeah, when you guys do the at Yvonne Williams... It highlights it in orange and really helps me to hopefully be able to keep track of who's talking to me and who's just talking to each other. Hey, Tiana. She did the chain mail last week. I did a half dozen pair and I tried to send you a picture, but it never would let me. Ah, so I put it on my Facebook page. <laughs> right on. <laughs> um, you can email us at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com or you can go to our website and send um, a message through a contact form. Uh, Jennifer says, would it be worth using a 22 gauge wire in making your own jump rings for those beads? Uh, the 22 gauge I wouldn't really trust for holding together um, very well. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be using uh, probably a 26 gauge wire because that's the thickest thin wire I have. And I will just wire wrap it, like do a wire wrapped loop. That way we don't have to worry about um which one does this match does it match those ones yes uh that way we don't have to worry about the ring splitting apart so in today's episode will it fit it won't <laughs> spoilers i don't think i put that right back in the right bin nope i didn't hey derpy Hey, Laura. I am making some earrings and necklaces. And I wanted to start off by one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just getting the dagger beads strung up onto their rings or getting them wire wrapped. So, hey, Julie, how's it going? Monday is a holiday. It is, isn't it? Well, we'll still be, um, we'll still be packaging up all the packages and printing the shipping labels, and so it'll go out on Tuesday then. 
26 color aluminum ring, 6 millimeter. Hmm. How to pronounce my name? Um, Yvonne, I guess is how I say my name. I don't know. I don't often say my own name. Randy, Randy calls me Vaughn a lot, like just V-O-N, but it's like Yvonne. Yvonne. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really that picky. <laughs> hey, Kelly, how's it going? Okay, so let's see if any of these green, and I'm not going to spill my coffee. I'm going to zoom out. Nope. There we go. <laughs> no worries. Well, hey, Tadashi. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it's a... a I saw somebody's name it reminded me of that song, and now it's stuck in my head forever again. Beep boop. But yeah, when shopping for dagger beads, how this one here has a wider base, and this one has a narrower base, it's much easier to fit rings through the narrower base. Wait, that's not where I pulled that from. There we go. Beep boop. Do 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 do. Okay, here's the green dagger beads. Ah, <laughs> Tara, right? <laughs> yep, just V O N. But again, I am not that picky. Like it's, I'm just happy you're talking to me. <laughs> Oh, beads. You're a bunch of butts holes. All right. I'm going to set that off <clears throat> to the side. And I guess I'm going to wire wrap these guys. Let me grab some wire. Renee, we oops. Oh, we're just making messes, really. <laughs> hey, Lois, how's it going? So, this is the 26 gauge silver plated silver pair of wire. And let me grab a couple of tools. And I guess we could just work on the spool on this one. So we're going to be wrapping this very much like how we would if we were wrapping a briolet or something like that. Briolet. I don't know how they're pronounced. I feel so like, I feel like a poser saying briolet because that sounds fancier than anything I have any right to be saying. <laughs> Oh no, Dashund, I hope you get to feeling better. And I'm just doing a little bit of a wrapped loop, a double loop. Oh, and the roar of the heater is coming on. I can't complain because it is cold. Um, six millimeter. I think spiral chain would look really cool with that. I think um, you might want to try out half Persian three in one. Like what gauge is it? And is that six millimeter inner diameter or six millimeter like outer diameter? <laughs> Kelly says, but it's the right way. Yeah, but like words are made up anyways, so. <laughs> okay, so we did that little bit of wrapping uh, Rhonda says, how cold is it there? In Houston, Texas, it's only in the 50s. I don't know, but my whole hands are cold. My toes are cold. My nose is cold. My cold is cold. Would some of those teardrop beads work as good as the dagger beads? 
they would. I just really like the colors of the dagger beads. Hmm. And so now from here, I'm going to wrap around the neck. And I'm going to start coming down. You know, I kind of really, I don't know, it's not my favorite to do it this way. I'm going to try it a different way. I mean, this top part of the uh, bead is going to be hidden anyhow. Oof, 80 to 50. Hey, Larissa, how's it going? Could you make some bracelets for a man? Um, really, any of the chainmail designs, a lot of it just depends on the style of the individual wearing it. Um, because I've seen some men who pull off very, like, flourishy, extravagant, uh, like designs that I think most people would consider like more of like a feminine design and I've seen lots of women wear very sleek and geometric in you know what might be considered more masculine plain jewelry so it really is more of just an aesthetic so uh, that's what I whenever somebody asks for well I'd like a, a custom piece but I want it to be you know very masculine I'm like well what does that mean to you because <laughs> um, like uh, I've seen a lot of gentlemen wear very heady style wire wraps as well, so it's there's no telling. Uh, Randy wears a lot of chainmail. I think any chainmail done in like stainless steel, uh, especially like square cut stainless steel rings, looks really really sharp. Would you know where I could find a titanium five millimeter stud earring some for, for some faux droopy? Druzy earrings. I, I would check the Ring Lord, Sarah. Um, or Fire Mountain Gems or Rio Grande, maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna snip again. That should be enough. Hey Gwen. Well thanks for joining us here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do so that we don't have to do any kind of like extra wrapping is I've threaded the 26 gauge wire through the dagger bead and I'm gonna twist, twist, and twist a couple more times. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to be helpful to you on a monopia. And I am just twisting that out the rest of the way. So now the wire is doubled. Briolette. Right on. There's an E. Huh. Ooh, what's Italian wedding suit? That sounds yummy. I don't want to. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> Yummy soap is good. What? <laughs> I like your enthusiasm, Chris. She says, I found the box of things. Thank you. Ah, excellent. Um, I would check out the Ring Lord, Sharon. For, uh, they have some different anodized aluminum and enameled copper sets as well. So now that we've wrapped, I wish it weren't blurry. I'm very sorry for that. I'm also sorry I'm like sniffling and stuff. <laughs> Got you, Chris. It took me a second. I was like, I bet he meant this. And then we just wrap it the way we would any other drop bead. Hey, Gary. Greetings, programs. And so that's one. 
yeah, that's much better. I very much prefer that kind of wrap for what I'm doing today. Give me just a sec to... Umber, I think I might fight you for that blanket, honey. I'm cold. So, yeah. So, what I did is... Boop. What is this? Four inches of the 26-gauge wire. And we just thread it on through until the dagger bead is at the center of the wire and then we're just pressing it up to cross it and then we twist it like a twist tie all the way down Ooh, oh Rhonda that would be so cool one of the projects ah black hammer Gary we did it which project was it Also, birds have finally started eating at, uh, we call it Callie's Bird Feeder, because we put it, we hung it in the tree where she used to like to climb, and, um, birds have started eating there, and the other day, like, Randy came over, and I was, like, crying, like, watching the birds, and he's like, you okay? And I, like, shook my fist, and I was like, she would have eaten every one of them! <laughs> so, but, it's, it's nice to get to think of her, and how much the birds don't miss her. Uh, whenever they're eating, so. Oh, Jennifer, I don't have enough lap to fit. I'm too big and Ember's too big. Uh, I have to be laying down with a pillow in my lap for her to be willing to sit in my lap. Because she's like, don't touch me. <laughs> Stinky humans. That's so there's few things as exciting as your first show. Like that's wow, what a what a mile marker. Okay. So well, the next of one of these is longer than the other one, but I'm not too worried about it. Hey, Kit, how are you doing today? Oh, yes, these guys over here. Um, these are some of our fused glass. This one is not dichroic. It's just so pretty. And I'm going to need to make the little wrapped loops to attach these into a necklace. And then this one is one of our dichroic glass pieces. <laughs> right on. And this is another, this one's probably my favorite. I love that color shift in it. And then these three over here to our right that are smaller, this one's one of our dichroic glass. <clears throat> as is this piece which I painted this one I actually painted the backs of both of these with silver nail polish to give them a little bit more of like almost like a bezel setting style color on the background there it is that's the direction I'm gonna be hanging it in and this one here is an amethyst that I picked out of our shop. <laughs> right on, Arthur. Okay. Well, what we're doing with these two green dagger beads is I just wanted to experiment with putting together a <clears throat> shaggy loops earrings, like a pair of those. Ooh, that's clever thinking, Jennifer. <coughs> Excuse me, not the Rona, just dying of allergies. Okay, setting that off to the side. So, 
how are we going to join these together? I'm just going to have to order more. I don't want to use those ones because those are all I have left. Yeah, okay. I'll use these and double up on them. Whoop. They're getting away from me. <clears throat> uh, okay, it's, it really is just um, 20 gauge 1 8 inch stainless steel rings woven in the half Persian 3 in 1. And then we use the Devcon 2 part epoxy there in the back. <clears throat> I did. We made the settings for... Now, we didn't make these metal moons, but we did the chainmail and then attached the little Celtic knot charms. Hey, Abigail. How are you doing today? So, from here, I'm going to pick up a seed bead, the dagger bead, and a seed bead. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rings open first. Yes. I will demonstrate that, Jenny. We actually have a few tutorials out already showing how to set an undrilled stone into the half Persian 3-in-1 bezel. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm really glad you like what we do, Abigail. I'm doing really good today. I'm just doing some rings, getting some craft therapy in. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, the air is so dry, it feels like I'm just choking on it. Yes. Now, the chainmail bezels hug the stones pretty snugly even without the glue but not nearly so snugly enough that like it definitely needs glued I think um, we've had some chainmail purists uh, leave like uh, comments on some of the videos that are like well if you wove it tight enough you wouldn't have to worry about the stone coming out and I'm like well that's great and all until you sell it to somebody and then it gets whacked on something or they're fidgeting with it and they pop the stone out and now they think my jewelry's crap because they don't understand how chainmail works. So I always take it with a, a grain of salt to presume that my clients don't know how the jewelry is made. And so, uh, you know, unless you know that that's a normal thing, it might come off as cheap or poorly put together or something like that. So a little bit of glue on the back just to really hold things in, I think, takes care of it. But yeah, give me just a little bit, Jenny, and I will uh, <clears throat> make another chainmail bezel for you guys. So now that we have the rings prepped, I'm going to pick up another... And these are... What size is this? I don't even know if this is the original container. They're a size 6 seed bead. Just hook them to the same size ring that we're using, a 20 gauge 1 8 inch. says, oh, oh no, you say chainmail jewelry and people think it can stand up to being pierced by an arrow. <laughs> Excuse me. Good grief. I will be right back, y'all. <laughs> Did I ever take my allergy pill? What's up with them? 
Okay, I'm back. I think I did take my allergy pill and it's just not kicking in. <laughs> well, thank you guys. <laughs> right on, Lois. Just we've watched our videos for years. Not just a belt to hold things together, but belt bracers and suspend suspenders for security. <laughs> So yeah, so I thought I'd make some little shaggy loop. Let's see. I've done one, two, three. One, two, three. So we can do two more. Cool. I thought it'd be a fun little dangly earring to make. Oh no! You ever see sneeze so hard that you crash the app? <laughs> So what are all y'all working on tonight? Okay, so for this one, I need to go ahead and attach the ear hook. Oops. I had to start including disclaimer cards. My orders for people think they can swing from a trapeze with handmade jewelry and get their money back or repair it for free, right? Now, we do provide free repairs on all of our jewelry if it's like, but we also don't do a whole lot of bead strung jewelry because if you break a bead strung and I didn't tie a knot in between every single minuscule seed bead, um, then I don't want to have to replace, you know, all of the gemstone beads for free. But we do provide free repairs, especially on like our chain mail and stuff. So there's one earring. I, don't, I thought it'd be just kind of cool to cool to try out a different shaggy loop so just that little drop I think somebody will like it ooh right on Yvonne gemstone clip berets barrettes okay Wrapping stones, amethyst, nice. Knitting a hat. Oh, y'all are so crafty. Going out to have Hawaiian barbecue. That sounds delicious. <laughs> Working on learning how to do this. <laughs> right on, this is a good place to be. I, I don't really pull that one. Where'd the... Right on. Well, you can always uh, email them to us, Rhonda, or you can tag us on Instagram. That's a really great way for if you want other folks to be able to see your work as well. Oh, very cool, Rosalie. Uh, Kelly says, oh, wow, so cut aluminum is way more expensive. It is, but it's totally worth it, especially since aluminum can be, especially on these smaller ring sizes, can be a lot softer than comparable, like, uh, stainless steel or something like that. So having saw cut, it's a lot less likely to snag, so it holds up a lot better. <clears throat> Myrtle asks, does your wire have nickel in it? I have a pair of beautiful earrings, but I can't wear them long because I'm allergic to them. I, we... I'm severely allergic to nickel, so uh, I don't use anything with nickel in it, with the exclusion of some of our chainmail rings are nickel silver, which is an alloy of uh, copper tin and nickel, I think, don't quote me on it, but um, I don't use that for ear wires. All of our ear wires are surgical steel. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm using here, Kelly and it holds up pretty well oops ah hey Lara how's it going working on the usual science <laughs> that's good to hear our very first spinach seed sprouted 
and we have the first dandelions of the year poking up in the front yard and our first daffodils are blooming so I'm like so ready for spring right now because I already have allergies it may as well be not this cold <laughs> so um I get my ear wires from Amazon or Fire Mountain Gems or The Ring Lord. If you check out our wire wrapping masterclass lesson two, we go really, really in depth into, whoopsie, oh shoot, and I'm going to have to go find that. Uh, we go really, really in depth into, where'd you go? Earrings and all of the links to where I shop, aha, found you, are down in the video description of lesson two of the wire wrapping masterclass. Oh, and I found another ring too. Oh, and another ring. Well, hot dog! I just been throwing crap on the floor. Ah, came up with treasure. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the main thing with doing the shaggy loops is you want to make sure that one bead falls on either side of the chain that ends up going down the middle. And then we close it and we've got two more rings until these earrings are done and then we can move on to the next project so you could just hook your new ring onto your center ring and if it's blurry for you I'm so sorry that's just how our live streams are because um, we stream from our phone and have really crappy internet uh, but we do have a tutorial for this that was recorded and then uploaded so it should have much better video quality um, Kelly, that depends on the material. Um, like, I've always gone with plated. I've never actually seen powder coated. And I also, all of my clasps that I use, if they're silver toned, I just get stainless steel. So there's no plating to wear through. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. I painted them earlier today <laughs> because we're going to be recording, um, beep boop. We're going to be recording a uh, master class lesson three tomorrow, and I wanted my nails to look nice for that. So, ooh, I love fold over clasps, but our customers have a really hard time taking them on and off. So, we don't often put them on our bracelets unless people specifically request them. I'm really liking these earrings, y'all. Like, and you can't really tell that one of the dacker beads wrap came out a little bit longer than the other. Oof, stay safe, Tara. Okay, so there's that. And now we can start putting, again, I want this one on the middlemost opening. Hey, Amanda, how's it going? Where do I find the Masterclass 2? Um, it's here on YouTube. If you just search um, Yvonne Williams Masterclass, like wire wrapping Masterclass, uh, or go into our playlists <clears throat> on our channel. Like, I feel terrible. I, I don't really know how to find it. I just work here. <laughs> like... <laughs> hmm. So, on one of these other necklaces, on this one, I was able to fit two rings through. But on this one, it looks like I'm only able to fit one. Which is troubling. Well, we're glad to have you, Amanda. <clears throat> Oh no! <laughs> Have mercy on Prince Philip. <laughs> ah, that's rough, <laughs> Derpy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, nope. It's only letting me do one ring. Okay. Well, this is life now. Ooh, slide bar clasps. Do y'all actually have 
any questions, please do the at Yvonne Williams so that it highlights it in orange so I can see it and write it down. But do y'all have any questions about clasps that you would like answered in our uh, wire wrapping master class that is entirely about clasps? Hey Valerie, how's it going? Jennifer says, I just emailed you a picture of a necklace I made with a bead jump rings linked together into a collar style. Ooh, okay. But yeah, I love the movement on these necklaces. <clears throat> Paints each nail different colors, scissors, sample colors. <laughs> I love that. That's very clever. Ah, uh, Kelly says I have an interesting time finding clasps that don't behave cheapy ish. Yeah. And sometimes um clasps will be a little funky when you get them because they've been put through like even good quality clasps can have a little bit of whenever you first get them and you're first using them they'll be a little hard to break out of that uh of getting the lever of the lobster claw to work um and it, part of that can be because sometimes they're tumbled through a polishing medium or like a wax to help kind of seal the surface of the metal and that will gunk it up a little bit um so sometimes all you have to do is just break it loose a little bit and I don't think that's a reflection on the overall quality of the clasps but it is definitely something that you run into a lot more uh, and can actually be an indicator of deeper problems with cheaper clasps but if you get some clasps clasps and you paid an arm and a leg for them it's not don't freak out it's not the end of the world that just happens like I've gotten like sterling silver clasps before that did that and I was like are you kidding me but you just wiggle it a bit and it it figures itself out. <laughs> Ooh, which of the handmade clasps is most secure? Let me oh I don't even have anything to write. Oh I do. I do have something to write things down into. Eep. Okay. So let's come through. Let me get a piece of scrap paper. We're gonna write some questions. Let me pull this out, actually. I don't know why, but I have a much easier time writing on the left page than I do on the right page. Where, oh, that's my pen cap, okay. Okay. type is clasped is most preferred. Now, I'm just going to say I've never had anybody, like, I'm going to answer these here in the stream, but then also direct the, or, uh, address them in the video as well tomorrow uh, the, on Sunday um the most secure clasps I think are ones like lobster claw like the sliding tube clasps like the latching like fold over latch clasps or anything that closes with more integrity than just a hook and eye clasp or a toggle clasp that's just using its own weight for being there because with on bracelets Sometimes if you're like me and you're, you're animated with your hands, it can really, your bracelets can snag on stuff. It can get like, I don't know. I just, I like something that closes with a mechanical mechanism for a bracelet beyond just a hook and eye. Now I've done hook and eyes where you then squeeze the hook kind of closer to being shut to where you have to use a little bit more pressure to unhook it. And those are 
the best, I think, handmade clasps unless like if you're just doing cold closures so unless you're getting into like actual metal smithing and making your own like you know tube clasps and things like that Ooh, my favorite to make <clears throat> oh no <laughs> that's a really good question <laughs> Right on. Kiwi's Place says, I'm only using lobster claws for all of my bracelets. In in our booth, that's what we do as well. It's very rarely that I'll use something other than a handmade, like, hook and eye clasp. Or, like, if it's not handmade, it's lobster claw. With a few exceptions. <laughs> ah! Oh, that's so cool, what you know? Ah, oh, Erica, that's a very good advice. Um, Erica says, I use sometimes magnetic, but have the chain that connects the two ends just in the chance that it gets knocked open. And that's a really, really good idea. How many of each colors we make those in? I find that when I start a bead project, it starts getting expensive. What can I do about this issue? Um, hmm. Whenever I'm doing beaded necklaces, I do what I call a mullet necklace. <laughs> and I think I stole that term from one of y'all, and if I did, I'm so sorry, but it was too good not to take. Um, but the, they're mullet necklaces where I do all the beadwork in the front and then I just finish it with either some very very simple beadwork or um, a chain and that way it literally cuts the amount of work that you're doing in half uh, in some cases the crescent findings I got these on Amazon like at some point in the past decade I'm sorry I don't have a better answer <laughs> Um, but typically if I'm working on a beaded necklace, I just, I, I know that it's going to be expensive. Um, and so I just design with that in mind. And so let's get this last one connected. There we go. Yeah, I just love the little bit of movement. And I was going to try to make earrings out of them with like some chain that joined together and had like it, but those would be like humongous. Oh, well, get to feeling better, Joe. <laughs> uh oh. Here comes another one. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the necklace, though. I was thinking about doing, like, wire-wrapped links and, like, a little bar necklace or something. I don't know. We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, Marie says, do you like to use the wire guard at the ends of your wires when you make bracelets? If I'm making beaded bracelets, yes, 100%. There's so much um, movement and pressure on a bracelet, uh, more so, I think, than even on a necklace, because very rarely do people talk animatedly with, like, flopping their heads around the way that we do with our hands, uh, or some of us can. <laughs> Derpy. Hmm. That, and I'm not gonna lie, I've put like at least half a chap or half a stick of chapstick up my nose today trying to like help with like my sinuses feeling chapped. And I think that has irritated my sinuses. <laughs> Could be all the chapstick. I don't know. Here, I can we can actually try out. Okay, and we're back. I'm so sorry for that, y'all. <laughs> so it's been a minute since the stream has crashed. I'm stealing your heated blanket. I'm freezing. You can still sit on the side over here. How about that? We'll split it. How about that? Okay, 
you guys may want to refresh your screen. <laughs> it's a mess. Ooh, this heated blanket's warm, remember? I understand why you were hogging it. <laughs> you know what crashed it, Randy? I had just gotten a message saying that I had used my limit of, uh, oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. Whew, okay, so what I was getting up to go grab before the crash was we had actually gotten some stainless steel, um, eep, rings, not rings, ball chain. And these are something that... Oh, there's a couple in there. I actually need to test wear these. I think these are some of my favorite when I have short hair. Because it's a very seamless. It makes me bonkers when these things slide around to the front, though. Bye, Marie. Have a great night. But they're very, very secure. So, I really like them. I like the way they feel. But they get tangled up in, like, the hair on the back of my neck. So, uh, it, for me, it kind of feels like wearing a little bit of an epilator. But, <clears throat> ooh, right on, Wayne. Grinch plushie. Hey, Misty, how are you doing? But, so that's always an option. And I got these from the Ring Lord. Just, I trust them. Whenever they say that something is stainless steel or surgical steel, I trust that it actually is that. As opposed to, uh, you know, if I'm just buying something on, like, Amazon or AliExpress or something. Um, and it's, like, non-tarnished. I'm like, yeah, I bet. <laughs> you know, these guys might attach easily with the rings. This nice hematite toned. Oh, my gosh, Myrtle. Hey, Tashers. Same. We're having craft therapy. And we are also taking questions for uh, answering in our next master class about clasps. Ooh. Um, oh, Kit says, while you were down, there were some questions about how you get to the after party link emailed to you. Can you help with the details? Um, if you have signed up for our Happy Crafter Club on our website where you get charged uh, for any of our membership levels, so like $1 or up, um, you will get an email sent to you. You can also go, where did it go? I found it. Uh, you can also go to the members only page or if you are a member to our Patreon account, because we do still accept, accept uh, one and five dollar pledges over on Patreon, we just don't send out um, packages to Patreon anymore because they don't always show us people's shipping information and that complicates things. Um, but yeah, uh, you can check, you'll get the link on Patreon, you'll get it emailed to you or, and, or you will get, um, able to access it through the members only, uh, page. Oh, right on, Lois. Where do you get that from? The ball and hitch clasp. What is a ball and hitch clasp? Is that what I was just showing with the ball chain? <laughs> now, these these are actually pendants because I, I am not, or they'll be necklaces because I'm not one of the people with, um, with those long necks. I haven't heard from Jim in ages, Michelle. I hope he's doing all right. We think of him all the time. Yes. Yeah, these ones we just still need to... We actually have a tutorial on this design on our channel. Um, These ones I think I got... On Fire Mountain Gems. I just got a ton of them. And then put them into a Chessex dice box. Mm -hmm. Hey Kate. How have you been? Let's 
So this isn't a ball and hitch clasp. Hey Nancy, we're making some jewelry. <laughs> been looking forward to gardens and camping same huh okay I have not heard of those or seen them I'll have to check that out oh no Anna I, I don't know how to help you out oh that one broke I mean it's not broken all the way but it's broken enough so I will set it into my broken bead pile gather up the broken glass bits and keep going shells and cheese <laughs> we are having leftovers for dinner and that is okay hey Debbie how's it going okay and then I like to wiggle the bead to where it actually covers the opening in the ring just because why not Are you opening up one end of ball chain clasp? Um, no. Leftovers do rock, Rhonda. <laughs> Sorry, it's sometimes there can be lag, so, and I don't have a whole lot of um, object permanence whenever it comes to stuff that I literally just said. Um, so it's like, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> So I'm so sorry. It's not a you problem. It's a me problem. And I'm working on it. But the ADHD is strong. Ooh, and sometimes it'll just go in so easy from the other angle. So sometimes you just got to flip the bead around. One, two, three. I'm going to make sure that's what I thought. Derpy. Uh, it's a really good possibility, Anna. I'm going to try from the other side. So again, it's not like the most riveting project on the planet, but I have a lot of fun with it. Loy says, I have bought the ball chain so the ends converted to receive jump rings and clasps of your choice. Well, that's neat. <laughs> hey, Randy. I'm good. He says he's good. <laughs> oh, baby girl, come on. We'll figure out a way to share the blanket. We will. All right, guys, I got to make some fundamental changes to my life real quick. I'm working on it. I'm going to get everything scooched over. over okay so I'm gonna go like this you ready yeah I gotta pick you up and I know you hate it okay there we go oh he's a pretty girl 
you like your heated blankie. <laughs> so, bye, Anna. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a good girl? You can come forward a little bit more if you want. Don't get mad at me for being close to your butt. I just gotta move this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so. <sighs> That's why I thought you'd be opening ends to punch a hole for a link or jump ring. Ah. Oh, no. No, I'm just, uh, just bumping around into stuff. Right, Erica? She has no concept of, <laughs> of live streaming or any of our mundane, silly human problems. She, well, she's a, she is a, she's a, she's a big girl. <laughs> Not too huge, though. Too much bigger kitties. She is a solid chunk. It is absolutely glorious. I'm actually going to zoom back out because I must share the glory of the chunk. All hail her highness, Ember the chunk. <laughs> oh, you get a pretty girl. Go get your little cheeksies. Oh, gotta get... Oh. Little face massage. Gotta get them ears. Got her bow. So pretty. There. <laughs> Cat. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear her purring, but she is just going. <clears throat> okay, what were we working on? Okay. So there we've got that wiggling. That on. So we've actually... We're not spoiled, <laughs> right? Ember is actually a very uh, surprisingly compromising cat. In that uh, we either do it her way or it gets done her way. And, you know, that's, that's pretty good. We can work with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, one more ember. I gotta get one more bead. Do -do -do -do. Hey, Elijah. Oh, wow. My voice is off. Is it? <clears throat> like with sinking or... <coughs> Excuse me. I've got like just this dry... This dryer is killing me, you guys. We had it out so long ago. You know, I bet. You can see my lips move. Oops. Ooh, oh Jennifer, I love that idea. Yes, we'll have to do that. Oops. Mm -hmm. 
there we are. Oh, hey, baby girl. You just gotta sit there judging us loudly. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna itch that booty. We got that booty. Don't bite me. Oh, it's a headbutt. I know it's precursing a, a bite. I just know it. <laughs> it's okay. I'd bite me too. You're you're a fair and reasonable ember cat. <laughs> hey, pro. Well, hey, Janice. I'm glad you're able to make it. <laughs> okay. So now we get to attach. And I did all the loops the same size on these ones. So. Ooh, I turned the heated blanket onto high. And that is nice. There we go. Uh, ooh, practice comes project, uh, progress, Norma. What got me started into jewelry making? Oh, that's a really good question, Kiwi. Um, well, I've always had metal allergies, and, like, so bad that, like, the buttons on my pants would, like, give me a rash around my belly button, and I, like, told my dad about it, because I lived with my dad and my brother at the time, <clears throat> you know, with being a child, I guess, but, uh, my brother saw it and then told everybody at school that I had vonorrhea, <laughs> and I had no idea about anything, so I was like, yeah! I have vonnery. <laughs> and I was like, it's highly contagious. Back up. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, no, it's, I had metal allergies. So, uh, like I would change out the clasps and ear hooks on jewelry. And I went to Ren Fairs in high school. Uh, Scarborough Fair was kind of our local fair back then. And, um, it just, it was hard to find anything, one, that I could afford, and two, that I could wear without it irritating my skin, and it's at the Ren Fairs that I got exposed to chainmail, and, like, kind of just started delving into the whole uh, fantasy aspect of jewelry, and then Randy and I started dating, and he started buying me jewelry, because he's like, well, you like shiny things, here you go, bird person, and, um... <clears throat> So then, like, I, I just kind of kept getting more and more into it, and uh, we started one year for, like, it must have been a late birthday present, because it doesn't make any sense that it would have been a Christmas present. It was either late birthday or early Christmas, but I had enough jewelry made out of a chainmail kit that Randy had gotten me when we were in our first apartment in Tennessee. So we moved from Texas from Tennessee, and I graduated high school. And, uh, and I had like 80 bracelets because it was one of the Ring Lord kits that had, what do you think, Ember? Cha -cha -cha. Yeah, cha -cha -cha. it's okay. It's okay. You're a cat. Um, and it, Randy's dad told us about the local art center. Like you could become a member and set up a booth at the host of Christmas past. And so we did that and it's been like we never looked back <laughs> so <clears throat> um Ingrid I had gotten my ball and chain from the ring lord but I don't I haven't really price checked or anything I just get it from there because I trust them on what their materials are you okay honey what? you okay yeah. okay oh did you put my chickens to bed yeah. thank you <clears throat> but uh yeah so that's kind of a very very like long short version of our origin stories <clears throat> Ooh, come get your hands warm honey that is. That is oh. oh that is the warm oh no <laughs> okay I'm gonna attach these to their corresponding necklaces before they get displaced uh, Ring Lord. It's theringlord.com. T H E R I N G L O R D. Nobody knows how to get back home. We 
had it out so Search the heaven and the earth below. Nobody knows why they gave up. So this is so weird, but these rings here are just a hair thicker. These are the ones that I gotten off of Amazon, and these are the ones that I get from the Ring Lord. And uh, they're just the ones on Amazon. The American chainmail are just a little bit thicker, and so I can't fit as many of them. So I'm gonna put them back in the thing. What's the end of the ring lord? Uh, dot com. May I ask what's the most expensive booth fee you were ever charged at a show? Um, Dragon Con, I think. No, actually there was somebody who was, we've gotten the most booths at Dragon Con before and had to get the most badges. So that one just as a whole was our most expensive. But there was some show I cannot recall specifically, I'm sorry. Um, but they wanted like $750 for a 10 by 10 booth. And I tell you what, that had me shitting bricks, like, <laughs> and we paid it, and, I mean, we covered expenses, but whenever you're at a show that, that, that pricey, it's, you have to move $750 worth of product before you've even covered, covered booth fee, you know, <clears throat> Yeah, Misty. <coughs> right on, Anna. Yeah, no, typically we brace ourselves, like, if they're charging around 500 and it's, like, a really good convention, uh, yeah, we'll pay, play, we'll pay that happily because, I mean, if we're lucky, we'll double that in the first day. Um... And so we try to have all of our expenses covered on the first day of selling. And that puts us, like, that's where we're shooting to be on a Friday. And that way, all of Saturday and all of Sunday is just, you know, yay, money. <laughs> so, but it's been, it's been a long time. Ooh, Expressive says Summerfest is like 2700 Yeah, I don't even touch festivals because they are so expensive. Um... She is my moving throw pillow. Do not throw this pillow. She is, she holds a grudge, I'm sure. Oh, you're not a throw pillow, are you, baby? Oh, she says, I'm the best throw pillow. Okay, <laughs> years. <clears throat> but yeah, like Bonnaroo, I think, is like sick, expensive. Um for their vending booths and it's just I mean but you get so many people through and they have such limited vendor space that it's like <clears throat> you know if if you don't buy the booth some other vendor will so they don't have to worry about it I guess it is outrageous which is why I encourage everyone to also have an online presence if you can even if it's just like a free square space website or something <clears throat> well, I don't like how that looks, though. Ember, what are we going to do? <laughs> I know, I need those really little beads. The rental fee for the first time doing was 20 bucks for an 8-foot table. Nice! Yeah, and that's... When we were first starting out, um, we didn't pay over $50 for a booth at, like, a craft show or anything. Until, I think we paid 250 for the NECA art show. That's the Northeastern Crafters Association that was in Huntsville at the time, and don't quote me on it, because this was literally a lifetime ago, um, but we were like, oh my god, that's so expensive, but it was a really good show. <laughs> <clears throat> um, have you ever done a county fair? If so, how did it go? We have not, but we have helped friends in their booth when they were doing a county fair, and, <sighs> well, it felt at the fair we were at now depending on your location might be you know different but the fair that we were at uh felt it had flea market vibes 
people aren't looking for handmade jewelry that, that you know anything more expensive than five bucks and they're going to look at you like you're crazy uh at the one that we were at so um that's tricky <laughs> How do you find shows? This season will be our first year going to shows and no clue even where to start. Do you have a video about that? I don't have a video about it specifically, but really it's, um, if you know that you want to do craft shows or if you know that you want to do conventions or art fairs or psychic festivals or, uh, LARPing events or whatever type of venue you feel like you would enjoy attending, because if you're having fun, the, whoever, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you're having fun, your customers are going to enjoy shopping at your booth more. So, like, we've ended a motorcycle rally. And I get noise triggered, like, instantly. And I was a grumpy bitch the entire time. And, like, even though I was like, okay, time to be pleasant because, like, there's, like, two customers. Um, it's, you could kind of tell, like, they could tell that... I wasn't having fun <laughs> whereas whenever we're at like a fairy festival I'm like a kid in a candy shop and it didn't matter if I hadn't made any sales I'm just so happy to be there that I'm like beaming um so <laughs> it's that's something to kind of keep in mind but wherever you think that you would fit in where or, or stand out um like we've had some folks talk to us who would go to like teacher conventions and they'd be the only jewelry booth there, but it would be like classroom friendly uh, jewelry, like stuff that kind of off, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, just looks like something a teacher would wear, if that makes sense. Like just like friendly jewelry, like it's not edgy goth stuff, that it's stuff that, it's stuff that fits in with school dress code is what I'm getting at. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then just Google that near you. So just, so if I'm looking for uh, craft shows near Carthage, Missouri, where we currently live, I would search craft shows near Springfield because that's a larger city that I'm willing to drive to. So it's find where you are on a map, find out how far you're willing to drive, and then find out that radius and any cities that fall, cities or towns that fall in that area, uh, just Google, you know, craft shows in St. Louis, craft shows in, <clears throat> right on, Amanda. She said the bike rallies would be good for me. Very cool. Nobody knows how to get back home. festivals or just enter key phrase that you're searching for and then just google that for whatever cities um is that the closest that ember has been settled with you while you do your crafting um she's been and i have to say we all miss callie but ember has been thriving she loves being an only cat um it's because it, Callie would kind of pick on her and she would kind of antagonize Callie back. So she would always be so defensive. But she's gotten a lot more like, I don't know, maybe she's only. But uh, I've also been treat training her that like we'll have like a cuddle session. And then uh, and I'll just hold her until she's like, OK, I went down and then I'll give her some num nums and we do that once a day. So now she's like, hey, <laughs> I know you got treats. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pamela, we live in Missouri. Who's a pretty kitty? Do you... you know, Amber, I don't think I'm going to get any work done today. And that's all right. I can use crutches. <laughs> ah, Expressive says, so we carve glass drinkware, and thanks to you, we now have it. <laughs> We are enablers. We now have naked spirit jewelry, and I already have so much jewelry. We were in Muskegee. There's nothing in Oklahoma. Well, if you're able to or interested, there is the Muskegee Ren Fair, but I don't know if that's kind of your thing. 
Um, there's also some conventions in Oklahoma, or were at some point there was Tokyo and Tulsa, but that kind of went weird when they set up the vendors in an abandoned Hobby Lobby. Um, hmm. You can do it. You can hop down. There you go. Oh, bye bye, Ember. I love you. Okay, we can get back to work now. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, when traveling to venues, how do you handle business license requirements for that location? I've been told in several, I have to have local business license. Um, oftentimes you just contact the, uh, local chamber of commerce. Um, with the conventions, we haven't had to worry so much about that. Um, it's, it, it sounds complicated, but really just look into... Uh, whatever city and state requirements there are in your area. Okay, so now we're going to try doing a couple. We have seven of these. Oof, I did not want to have to... You know, before I cut all of this, I am going to try... Just a few more rings. I'm not ready to give up yet. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's a really good point, Elijah. He says, I've been doing the farmer's markets under the license of the market itself. And that's oftentimes um, different events will cover the licensing. And then you're just uh, kind of under their banner for the weekend. So it depends entirely. Is that a whisker or just a... No, it's not a whisker. Maybe. I don't know. I, I have I save whiskers, so I'll save that one. Yep, nope, that's just not fitting. Okay, fine. I'll do the wire wrapping. <laughs> wow, right on Renda. I'm supposed to have one if I'm selling on the streets again, but whoops, left that at home. Yeah. And while I do recommend that you always get the licensing because it'll be the one time that you don't, that they have somebody coming around checking everybody's licenses at an event. Um, but it's, we've never had anyone check. For licensing. Now, I would not take that as a, oh, well, I don't need one. It's just, it's better to have it and not need it than, you know, otherwise. So, but that's, that's between you and however much you like antagonizing local uh, bureaucrats. Um, so, Molly says, I save whiskers also. I have lots. Any ideas for them? I keep them in a jar like a magpie fiend and I don't know <laughs> like I just have little like like some medicine or something had come in like this cool rubber stoppered thingy and so I have one that I keep like like dog whiskers in and one that I keep cat whiskers in because I'm weird and it's just like little mementos like I don't know I hope somebody else does that and I'm not just like a psycho. Hey, Red Riding, how's it going? I feel like it's been ages. Yeah, and I've never really had to get a different license for every city, just our one business license um, has worked for like, gosh, for like, five or six years we were living in Missouri but maintaining our Tennessee business <laughs> license so um so yeah it's who knows <laughs> not me that's for darn Putin that's not the right ring size at all there they are 
many of those necklaces will be made? Um, well, we've got these three in this style, and then these three in the smaller, and then one, two, three, four, five, six of these moon ones, like the kind of hanging that way. But it's we are working on production, and honestly, I might just start a completely separate project altogether um, because I. I might do duplicates of this, the colors that do thread through easily with the rings because I really don't want to have to wrap all of these. So I'm, I'm going to sideline this project and we are going to make some star flower earrings because let's check our production numbers. a planner. Okay. Um, did we not get, we got a bunch of stuff made yesterday. Hey, Randy. Oh, yeah, we did. It was all the, these bracelets right here, right? Yep. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I already accounted. Okay, so we've hit bracelets for the week. Okay, so we've been keeping track. Do what? We hit the high marks for bracelets for the week. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, I haven't finished any of the, oh yeah, we did. I hit necklaces. But yeah, so this is how we're keeping track of daily. <laughs> we actually, shameless self-promotion, check out Compass Rose Planner Co. Because we started another business <laughs> because I had too much free time. I guess I got to sit down and I was like, I can't be having this. Time to start a second business. But we design custom uh, planners and we are straight up in the very beginning steps of doing that. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, check out Compass Rose Planner Co. But yeah, I'm going to get I'm going to focus on earrings. But yeah, uh, right now we're just making kind of modified um, Happy Planner compatible custom pages. Oh my god. Randy, do you see Ember? She's pouting, rubbing her butt all over my bead tray. <laughs> huh. It's like I wanted to be on the blankie. <laughs> Uh, hey, Lydia, how's it going? Oh, well, thanks, Gypsy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'll move these off to the side. So now we're working on, this is actually designed from our very first tutorial ever. Um, little star flowers. So I am going to be using the 26 gauge wire, and I'm going to be working off the spool as well. And we're just going to dump out one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And these are size six seed beads. I really like using four millimeter as well, or even six millimeter for um, earrings. I do eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, and even larger for pendants. <laughs> Ooh, Debbie says, do you always make one of a kind or multiples? I'll try my hardest to make multiples if I can, um, just because oftentimes whenever we were vending or even when we were just put making stuff and posting it for sale on our website or for an auction or something, um, if I make something in a popular color scheme, I'll make like anywhere from like three to five of that like like how we have these three pieces over here that are kind of the same color scheme and that's because 
that color scheme sells pretty well for us. Um, and I'd hate to just make one and uh, it sell and then other folks, maybe they saw it on social media or, some, whoopsie, or something and they're like, I must have that. I, I'd like to have enough in stock that multiple customers can come in for the same product and now, um, or rather for the same design. Whenever we're at conventions, oftentimes, like we were doing over 30 conventions a year and <clears throat> you're trying to have enough one of a kind original designs made that we could do nine events back to back. Um, there's no way that I, I personally could have done that. Um, certainly not sustainably. So doing duplicates of a design with color or gemstone, like either metal tone or gemstone type or glass color modifications gave us a way that we could make, you know, take one design and make like our dragon eyes. We'll do, you know, 10 of a color, but do 10 different colors. So that gives us a hundred pendants that are each technically, you know, one of a kind, they all come out a little different, but if somebody comes through and they're like, Ooh, I love that, but I wish you had it in like purple, we'd be like, behold, and pull it out of back stock and hopefully trade them the pendant for some money. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and it's a lot easier with round beads to get them to sit pleasantly shoulder to shoulder with each other. And then we're going to wrap twice to make the bail. And then we're going to come down. Let's pull the mandrel out. And then pull that over. And again, we do have a tutorial for this one. It's just our star flower pendant that goes into much more detail. I'm sure this is a lot crispier when my hands aren't so cold either. Okay, and now we'll wrap once, twice, and thrice. <clears throat> oh, hey, baby. Yeah. I know, it's cuddle time. And it's about this time every night that I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oof, we're making a tangle mess. There we go. But yeah, just a little wee bitty. Okay, okay. But yeah, any of y'all who've been watching our channel for a while, Ember is usually not this outspoken. She is usually not uh, this pushy. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry, I called you pushy. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> Well, you wanted picked up. I don't know what you want me to do. Okay, there we go. Yep. <laughs> okay, so let's do another one. <laughs> Sabaya. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Yeah, she's my good girl, though. Okay. Hey Joyce, I am making some earrings and we are just hanging out. <laughs> Fuzzy bugger indeed. Ah, 
As far as your wire, I find I dent or scratch my wire when I squish. <laughs> Does pair of wire scratch easily? And are you using half hard? Um, I don't think pair of wire scratches easily. Uh, certainly not as easily as other enameled wires. Now, they don't sell pair of wire as a... I mean, unless you're getting like their silver filled or their sterling or something, they don't sell it as a hardness, but I think it falls between dead soft and half hard, much closer to the dead soft side than half hard, though it does work hard and up nicely, but it that takes some intent. It doesn't accidentally work hard. And... Amber's looking at me like, can I speak to your manager? You are my manager. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> Do what? Treats and cuddles, right? Oof. Yeah, get you some sleep, Meta. There we go. I'm just wrapping this around. Gonna be interested in the wire now. That's all right. I'm interested in wire too. <laughs> hey, patio. Okay, so now, and I'm not going to lie, the uh, the size 6 seed beads are not my favorite for doing this design with. That's just what I had immediately here on the table. Um, I, I do prefer a nice, like, round bead. Hey, Kelly. Not Kelly Noble, Kelly Shonix. Uh, I think you need to calm down. <laughs> I'm using a 26 gauge, Beth. But yeah, those came out pretty cute. There we go. Ah, uh, thanks, Sage. She's a good kitty. Alrighty, we've got some more ear hooks, I'm sure. Here we go. Yeah, Rhonda, anytime. Oh no! No, Kelly, you're good. Okay, and so for these ones, I don't really use a jump ring to attach it. I just open up the ear hook and then I come in and just hook the charm that we've made on and then close it just like so and we're gonna put an ear back on it my hands are so cold <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> super adorable right on pro uh 
Lois the It's 26 gauge wire. Oh no, Elijah. He says, I'll be shocked if I actually accomplish something. You've got this, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ember, I think I'm allergic to you, baby. I'm so sorry to have exploded in y'all's ears. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Just calm down. <laughs> Ooh, Jennifer says I had some four millimeter round labradorites. I did the star fly design with their wick and the silver. Oh, excellent. My best advice that I can give you, Elijah, from somebody who, despite how it may seem in my online presence, is not doing life particularly efficiently right now either. You know, we all have our struggles that we deal with, but um, treat yourself with a kindness that if you were your own best friend, be there for yourself the way that your best friend would be. Or, you know, if you had a, a good friend that was going through a rough patch, be there for yourself the way you'd be there for them. And that is not always easy, but... <laughs> Maybe pro. Perhaps in the after party. We will see. I did already record yoga today, so. <laughs> right? You know, it's, I, well, sometimes we'll get folks who come through who are genuine trolls. Sometimes we'll get folks through who are maybe just taking existence a little too personally and need to calm down. Because the only catty bitch allowed in my chat is me and Ember. So... <laughs> like it just frustrates me mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah if if folks aren't looking to be chill there's there's the whole expansive rest of the internet for them to go and enjoy themselves <laughs> iris standing by malarkey does ban hammer for people like that gotcha <laughs> yeah i've got randy in the other room but i don't know if he's busy with something else or he's always got like five or six projects going on um, let's see Ooh, I'm going to make some with just silver beads now these are 4 millimeter um, silver plate but it still looks cute but yes yeah, it's been this sort of just week <laughs> this past like two days um that uh if anybody hurts my vibe i'm just gonna lose my damn mind <laughs> like oh kiwi says his words of wisdom i'm loving this type of jewelry therapy do you do this every friday we try to um it some like if we're sick or if we're traveling or something we won't have them but we keep that up to date i mean i don't like budget time for getting sick um but uh it's if we know we're going to be traveling we'll have it posted up on the website calendar uh it's back to earth creations.com and the calendar's posted at the very bottom of our home page you just scroll on down past all the shameless self-promotion and um stuff do you ever draw out your designs or do you just try things and see what works kind of both um it's i don't know i always try to keep some sort of you know scrap paper around 
for like doodling in and I've got like some graph paper and stuff and I'll draw some designs down but oftentimes they'll take on a life of their own. Ooh, Elijah says, how do I wire up pearls? Are they drilled? Because with pearls, you want to be very careful with anything that um, you would be using like a polishing compound or something with because that can scuff up the surface. Um, because pearls are very, very soft. <laughs> well, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, but I will try to help you all as much as I can with my crafting and your crafting and the crafty crafting. Don't drill them, says Iris. Ooh, wow. I don't know. I haven't gotten, honestly, I have not gotten to play with pearls nearly as much as I would have liked um, by this point in my career. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, definitely uh, I'd stick to either stringing with silk or um, using like a non tarnish wire or like silver or something. But I, I, you might want to Google too. I don't know how they do with liver of sulfur. <laughs> cold, cold hands. I love this heated blanket though. Where did that ring even come from? Who are you and why are you in here? little chainmail ring. That doesn't even, that's not even one of mine. That was just in there. That's weird. <laughs> ah, oh, Elijah, that'll be so cool. Ah, uh, thanks, Sage. I'm glad you like it. Can you use boiled eggs on the stuff you can't LOS? Yes. But I would also just be worried about, like if I were using turquoise or malachite or azurite or anything, pearl, um, abalone, or just anything that is going to have a softer surface, I'd be very, very careful when polishing. So that's kind of something to keep in mind is, you know, if you don't want to have to polish the whole thing because of risk of you know, uh, agitating a bunch of pearls. <clears throat> then um, you might want to maybe mix up liver of sulfur and apply very sparingly and strategically with like a paintbrush or something. Uh, might be a good idea. Yeah, the uh, Myrtle, the sulfur put off by just hard boiled eggs. You can boil up some eggs and put them in a baggie and uh well you peel them right is that how you, i always peeled mine i hope you're supposed to peel them i also eat them afterwards so i don't know if i'm supposed to do that uh, <laughs> but i lived it worked uh, for now i guess but uh what were we talking about bye derpy there we go do that last little wrap oh yeah put in the egg water i have no idea google it y'all <laughs> that's what i'd be doing like, a good portion of our day has actually become uh, just Googling stuff for people in emails. Because they'll ask me, like, and, and we do, we encourage folks to, you know, write in with their questions. And so I don't mind it a bit because it helps me to stay sharp. Because y'all have questions about stuff that might have never occurred to me. So I'll just Google it and be like, well, I Googled it and, you know, and answer it that way. <laughs> right on, Gary. 
Okay, so there's another little pair of star flower earrings. And, whoops. So there you can kind of see the side by side, the blurry side by side of perfectly round beads next to those size six seed beads. I didn't even see pro where's Randy <laughs> he's he's in the other room <laughs> right yeah he's in the other room sorry I had to peek over he's being real quiet today <laughs> hey baby sometimes I think you only love me for food and I can't blame you <laughs> You went back up? Of course you went back up. I was finally being productive. Ooh, oh my goodness. Okay, so it is 7.06 and we've got to go because I need to eat and get some stuff together before the after party. But thank you guys so, so much for coming and hanging out with us today. If you all have any questions about anything, you can leave it down in the comments or you can send us an email at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com and we can try our best to be helpful to you. I don't even know where my tripod is. Um, so <laughs> um, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. It was, I really needed this. And I look forward to seeing you all. If, you, uh, if you're interested in joining our Happy Crafter Club, it's just a dollar a month. And that gets you a 20% off discount to our... Look at this freaking cat, though. She's such a goober. I love you. Um, it gets you a 20% off <clears throat> discount to our shop, our online shop. Um, and you get access to our after parties, as well as first dibs on our shop updates. And now with our $10 and up membership levels, you get booty boxes. But we've got... All the info, the links are down in the video description, hopefully. And uh, I will see y'all in, in like 20 minutes. <laughs> bye, guys. Happy crafting. I'm not entirely certain. There it is. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>